Hello again everyone. This is part two of my C Various Canadian records. And I'll start this off by showing you a very uh, kind of rare obscure album by somebody called Cochrane. Hang on to your resistance. Now Cochrane is also known as Tom Cochrane and uh, later on a member of Red Rider who had many hits here in Canada. Some success in the States and also as Tom Cochrane as a solo act in the 1990s and he wrote and had a big hit with Life is a Highway. Life is a Highway is a sta still a staple of FM radio here in Canada and it was also covered in the States I think by Rascal Flatts a few years ago and was a big country hit down there. It's a song you hear in many TV commercials and you hear it all over the place really. But this was Tom Cochran's first recording and on Daffodil Records 1974 drums on this was played by a fellow by the name of Dean Cameron. Dean Cameron went on to become the president of Capital EMI Records in Canada and Tom Cochran and Red Ryder had a long association with Capital Records. Being on Daffodil, this is the Daffodil sleeve that would come on all the Daffodil albums back in the 70s, with the heart on it. You remember the Christmas album from the last video I did, it was on Daffodil. It was one of the first Daffodil releases. This one's DAF 10 10043, 43rd release on Daffodil, 1974. Next we have Bruce Coburn, who's a kind of a legendary figure in Canadian music, you know, along the likes of people like Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, Bruce Coburn continues to record. He's recorded, I think, about maybe about 30 recordings, 30 uh, albums and CDs. Before he went solo though, he was a member of this group, Three's a Crowd, and this was their sole release, Christopher's Movie Matinee. It was released in 1968. Recorded in California and Los Angeles and was produced nominally by Mar Mama Cass Elliot. He doesn't appear on the cover of this album, but he, uh, Bruce wrote some of the songs on this album and later became a full-fledged member of the group for about a year or so. Then he went solo, recorded this in 1969 or early 1970. It's the first uh, release on Canada's True North Records. It's TN number one. Really, really nice cover. Great material. Featuring songs like Going to the Country and Musical Friends. I've always really liked this album. This is Bruce's second album called High Winds White Sky. Typical urban scene this time of year in Canada. This is from late 1970 and uh, there's Bruce down there in the corner. This could be Toronto, it could be Ottawa. My preference is for his early material. I didn't, I'm not so fond of his 80s stuff and later really. it uh, He has kind of a droning sound and uh, much akin to, to Nick Drake I suppose. Nick Drake from a career standpoint he was almost maybe fortunate that uh, that he recorded only three albums in a way um, because the three albums Nick Drake recorded were treasures. Bruce Coburn you know continued for almost 30 recordings and uh, my preference is for the early stuff. That's Humans. This one's called Mummy Dust. And notice the cover it has the doorway. Same doorway that's on his first album for some reason. It's reprised here for this album. This one's called Inner City Front. Now apparently, and I just read this in the paper a couple of weeks ago, Bruce Coburn at the age of 66 became a father again. That's something I don't think I would do. But saying that at 66, uh, he must still have a rocket launcher, which is kind of a joke that only Canadians or Bruce Coburn fans might appreciate. Comox and Friends. This is their sole album, I think. It's from 1974. Comox is a town 
on Vancouver Island, on the east side of Vancouver Island. It's uh, also the name of the native band from that area and their language, much like Chilliwack. More native names here in Canada. And this album is kind of a folk pop kind of folk album. Very, very nice music. It was recorded in uh, Can Bay Studios, Mushroom Studios, the same place where Chilliwack recorded, same place where Hart recorded Dreamboat Annie, and Mike Flicker, who produced Dreamboat Annie, performs on this album playing percussion. This is an album by a fellow by the name of Tony Cooper. It's called Never Hold Me. This is Vancouver Harbor on a very wet day. Living in, apparently if you live in Vancouver, it rains a lot. So I hear all the time. Up here it just snows a lot. The Cooper Brothers, Pitfalls of the Ballroom. The Cooper Brothers recorded two albums for Capricorn Records, and this is the second of the two. And it's just prior to Capricorn closing up, I think around 1980. They were very popular albums here in Canada. They sold quite well. Rick Wommel and Copper Penny Fuse. This album came out in 1975 on Capitol Records here in Canada. It's in the Capitol 6000 series. Copper Penny might be more well known for a big hit they had around 1973 called Sitting on a Poor Man's Throne, which is which is really a really good song, great song. This has a song called Disco Queen, which is not so great a song. I'm on the lookout for the other Copper Penny album. The Cowboy Junkies, The Trinity Session. This is from, I think, 1987, and uh, it's Margot Timmons and, and her brothers are in this group. Um, the cow this album is quite well known for having tremendous sound quality. It was recorded in a church in Toronto, and the ambiance is, is really exceptional. It's a great sounding album. And the follow-up album was uh, The Cowboy Junkies, The Caution Horses. This was released in 1990, so it's one of the last mainstream vinyl releases before vinyl kind of went passe back in uh, 1991. Thank you for watching.